as a whole. It's been four years since tolls started on the Midtown and Downtown tunnels. Now a new study reveals how Portsmouth businesses are feeling the pinch. And that's our top story tonight. I'm Janet Roach. And I'm David Allen. We want you to help us tell this story. Open up the 13 News Now app, tap the live voting tile and tell us. Do tunnel tolls force you to take a different way into Portsmouth? Or do you avoid them altogether? 13 News Now reporter Jacqueline Lee talked to the expert behind that study. Well, Jane and David, James Cook is an economics professor over, over at Old Dominion University. He says Portsmouth is suffering the most because of these tolls, but there may be some solutions. They're annoying and they're costly, but the tolls are here to stay. A lot of our uh, customers are shipyard or, or naval hospital that use, probably use the tolls a little bit more. And uh, I think it's affected us at lunch. Tyler McMillan owns Barron's Pub in downtown Portsmouth. He said when tolling first started in 2014, his lunch sales dropped between 25 to 30 percent. That hurts. A person's budget can only go up so high and it can only budget in lunch so much or dinner, you know, accordingly. In fact, tolling causes Portsmouth to lose $8.8 .8 million in sales every year. That's according to Old Dominion University economics professor James Cook. They make transportation more efficient and cut down travel times and make travel more reliable. But the problem here is that the impact is really huge on Portsmouth. Cook found those commuting in and out of Portsmouth are paying about $1,000 a year in toll fees. He says Portsmouth is suffering the most compared to other cities in Hampton Roads. Well, one solution is simply for the state to put in more money to uh, re reduce the tolls. But tolls will continue to increase at least 3% each year, thanks to the state's agreement with Elizabeth River Crossings. McMillan says it hurts Portsmouth all around. You just feel like you got to eat it and move on and do the best that you can. Members of the Portsmouth City Council are uh, brainstorming some solutions. They want to bring their ideas to the General Assembly next session. Jacqueline Lee, 13 News Now. How much is the toll? Well, it depends. If you're crossing during peak rush hour, it will cost you $2.09 with an easy pass. That number jumps if you pay by plate. It's $3.81 if your plate is registered with ERT. If not, expect a bill in the mail for $5.53 for each crossing. All right, let's check in with the results of our poll. Most of you say you stopped going to Portsmouth after the tolls were put in place. We thank everyone who took part. All right, let's switch gears and talk about the latest stretch of beautiful fall days. 13 News Now coming up right here in Williamsburg. We're not seeing a lot of change when it comes to those fall colors of the trees, but one spot seeing some big changes, the ocean front. Yeah, looking live right now at a very empty, well, I'll see a couple of people boardwalk. The chilly weather is settling in and it's about to get even cooler. Evan is in for Jeff. That's right, and we could certainly use that cooler weather to help with those fall colors. Last week I was up in West Virginia. They haven't even seen any color changes out there. High temperatures today, upper 60s to low 70s. We mentioned earlier that Hampton had a bad reading come in, not 133 degrees there today. But again, upper 60s to low 70s today, and a cold front is set to move in later tonight, and that'll drop those temperatures tomorrow. We had a few clouds move through this morning, gave us a beautiful sunrise with some nice colors, but now that front is off towards the north and west. It's this front right right in here that will slide through later tonight, dropping those temperatures tomorrow. So through the evening, we're looking at pleasant conditions, but tomorrow quite a bit cooler. Again, today we got up to 71 degrees. Notice tomorrow breezy and cooler starting out the day in the upper 40s to low 50s, and we should top out in the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees. Now we are watching a developing coastal system that could impact us as we head into the weekend. Details on that coming up in a few minutes. All right, vote 2018. We're just two weeks from Election Day. If you spent any time watching TV in recent weeks, you know there is little love lost between the candidates in the second congressional district race. Today, incumbent Scott Taylor and challenger Democrat Elaine Luria faced off in the first of two debates. 13 News Now reporter Mike Gooding tells us at the end there were some verbal fireworks. It seemed like a largely civil affair with the candidates sticking mostly to matters of public policy. Of course, they found very little room for agreement, like on the subjects of tax cuts and when it came to what to do about Social Security. That's pretty standard fare in any debate. What was unusual came at the very end when Democrat Elaine Luria raised the subject of fraudulent petition signatures and the role that Republican Scott Taylor's staffers may have played in that episode. 
Well, I think that people want to be able to trust their representative. And when he said that he was going to fire anyone immediately who was involved in this, and we can now see that those people are still on the payroll, I think it's a question of being able to trust what he says and that what he says is what he's going to do. When we found out any wrongdoing, we held people accountable. We moved on. I think that when the DCCC sends their lawyer into Richmond and their lawyer says there's no evidence of any wrongdoing by Scott Taylor, and then the DCCC creates ads saying that Scott Taylor's running from the law or running from a subpoena, which of course is illegal, and I'd be I'd be put in jail if that was the case, right? That is, they, they knew it was false and they did it with malicious intent. I don't when we're when we're walking the neighborhoods and talking to people and things like that, uh, that's we don't hear about that. The only people we hear about it from, no offense, is the media. This was the first debate. There will be one more between Taylor and Luria. It's before the Central Business District Association next Tuesday, October 30th from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the Weston Town Center. Mike Gooding, 13 News Now. An influential group in Portsmouth is encouraging people to vote for a convicted felon. Today, the MLK Leadership Steering Committee and local pastors endorsed Dr. Mark Whitaker for city council. According to the registrar's office, Whitaker is no longer a qualified candidate for city council. He was convicted of three felonies and under Virginia law, a convicted felon cannot run for or hold public office until his rights are restored. But supporters still say votes for Whitaker will be counted. We asked our political analysts to sort it all out. The law isn't, isn't super clear on this. I mean, the law doesn't talk about situations like this in any real clear way. Um, so what you have to do is you have to go back to the Constitution of Virginia, which says that the highest vote getter wins. All right, just about an hour ago, state elections officials responded to our request for clarification. They say if Whitaker is one of the three highest vote recipients, he would not be eligible to take office. And therefore, the only resolution is to hold a special election to fill the seat. We have a crime alert for military families. Police warn thieves are targeting military housing in Virginia Beach. 13 News Now at the Wadsworth Shores development early this morning. That is near Damneck. Detectives tell us two cars were stolen on Newburgh Court overnight. A third was taken from Cooperstown Court just a block away. Neighbors say several of their unlocked cars were ransacked. There's been quite a few other neighbors and other courts that have been broken into, cars were stolen, um, not necessarily keys left in vehicles, but um, just basically like old school hot wired um, stolen. As always, if you saw anything unusual, give the anonymous crime line a call. A sailor accidentally shoots himself in the leg at Naval Station Norfolk. It happened this morning in a security training building where weapons are checked out. Medics rush the sailor to the hospital. He's expected to be okay. The Navy tells 13 News Now a safety investigation is underway.